All right, so Geshen's going to take us through why logs are going to be your best friend. Thanks, Geshen. The only thing worse than being blind is having a sight but no vision. That's what happens when you have logs, but they're not meaningful, or probably you don't have logs at all. This talk is going to be about how logs can be a software engineer's best friend if you follow the, the best practices that I'm going to show. I am Gishan Mahandar, a senior software engineer. Call myself a tech solution provider, as well follower, and a conditional microservices believer because microservices does not fit every team and every use case. I'm originally from Kathmandu, Nepal, the only country <laughs> woo, the only country that has a non-rectangular flag and currently is pumping around a billion dollars to the Australian economy with all the students pouring in. <laughs> I work at the Iconic. Uh, as I said, I'm a senior software engineer. Who of you know the brand, the Iconic? Good, almost half of the audience, that's good. Yeah, but it is a fashion e-commerce company, a very good place to work. A lot of cutting edge technologies. Yeah, anyhow, a very good place to work. Uh, so let's look into what I'm going to cover today. Before that, I want to know how many of you identify yourself as software engineers, front end, back end, whatever, software engineers? OK, almost everyone. And how many of you identify yourself as DevOps SRE engineers or do some DevOps SRE work? OK, good luck. Nice. OK. So, Basically, what I'm co going to cover in this talk is what is application log? Why do we need to log from the application level? How do we do it? Some tools of the trade. Some logging best practices and some key takeaways. There will be a short demo at, at, at the end. So what is an application log? For instance, you get logs from the servers as well, like Apache pu puts a lot of logs there. Maybe you get logs about consumption, about your, your memory consumption resources. But why? what are application logs? If anyone has followed 12-factor apps or knows about 12-factor apps, which is pretty popular in the DevOps scene, is it basically talks about 12 very important factors for distributed applications from your code has to be in uh, like tracked in a version control system to your configs has to be in your environment and all these things. And amongst that, one thing is logs where it says logs are a stream of aggregated time-ordered events collected from the output streams of all running processes and backing services. So the thing here to focus is stream and it's time-ordered. Similarly, Technopedia says similar things. An application log is a file of events that are logged by a software application that contains errors, information events, and warnings. Again, the, like a similar thing, it's a file of events. So it's basically time-ordered things that you have that you want to that you want to take care of or that, that you want to be informed of. So, to look it up from a different lens, it's more like application logs are having the right reading glasses. You could kind of work things out without them, but then if you have the right reading glasses with with the right power you happen to see a lot of new things that you didn't really know existed or that were there, that were very evident. So why should you actually log from the application level? Why should you be explicit and try to log stuff from the application level? If not one of us, probably most of us have said it, said it like, I did something to production last week. It was working fine till yesterday, but now I have no idea why it's not working. So if you have, if surely one of us has, has said this or has overheard this, if you have happened to get into this kind of situation, sometimes finding the real problem, finding where the problem is like finding a needle in the haystack. And it's not easy, like maybe something else has changed that was not part of your application and that has broken your application. So how log helps is it helps you pinpoint the exact place where application or software is not working as expected. For instance, a, a recent example I remember is there was another authentication app that was in front our, of our application, and we hadn't changed anything. The guys who were maintaining the, the, the auth app 
decided to change a key, and we were also dependent on the key. We shouldn't have been, but we were, unfortunately, and that completely broke the app. No one could log into it. And because we had logs in place, it was easier for us to pinpoint, okay, we have not deployed it for the past five days. It's not us. It's probably something on a different layer. And that's how we could find out, we could find out that, okay, it's, it's throwing a positive three. It's not really getting into the application, and that's how we could solve it a lot faster. Another reason to use logs is to stop speculating and try to get the real data and metrics that you need from any, in any environment. Another example that comes into my mind was probably a few years back, like we were a couple of developers speculating that the memory consumption of this particular process should be around 200, 250 MB. But we didn't know until we actually put logs and put that logs into production that it was consuming more than 512 MB of RAM and then the, then the pod was being killed. So things like these, they, these insights, they come to you when you have proper logs in place and you are doing logging from the application level. Another example is, yeah, we, another speculation that we had that the promise was being resolved and then the value of this particular variable was X. It, it was a, a new code and some of the developers were new to Node as well. So a lot of speculation, we tried to fix the bug, we could not get to the root of the problem, but then only after adding logs we found out, okay, wow. This is not what is actually happening on production. It, this is something else. And then we found out the real values, and that helped us solve the issue. If you think of it, logs are the only way that your application actually communicates back to you. Logs are the way that your application talks back to you. So it's always good to have logs at the right places so that the application can tell you something like user ID blah, blah, blah has been created. Or, wow, there was a issue here and I have rolled back the transaction, please try to figure it out what's happening. Maybe the database connection went away, maybe the internet connection went away or, or something like that. So be very careful and listen to what your application is telling you and logs are one of the medium that it talks back to you. Another very important thing is the MTTR, mean time to recovery. The thing that comes to my mind is taxes and downtimes are inevitable. You'll need to pay taxes, you'll have downtimes. So the thing is, how responsive are you? How resilient is your application? The downtimes will be there, but what's your mean time from the application experiencing that the app was down to the app was back up again? That's basically MTTR, like how, how long does it take for you to go up? If you have logs in place, you will get out of the mess a lot faster than trying to shoot in the dark. So even in terms of having any issues or problems, logs helps you a lot. Yep. Another very important thing is logs are like having a torch in a dark place. You, you can't do anything in, in a dark place unless you have a torch. Or it's like having a night vision glass when you go out in the dark. Whenever you have issues, or maybe not even issues, whenever you just want to take a check on the application's health, that's what you just jump into. You, you, you go into your logs and then see what's happening. Now let's look at how and what tools are available for you to log from your application level. Again, coming back to the same thing, I think we have seen a, a different version of this this morning. Don't try to screw the hammer use the right tools for the job to make it easy. I, like, a lot of times I have seen this happening. I have seen things like people taking out a gun to kill a fly. So <laughs> things like these do happen. Therefore, always think of your decisions and then put it into context so that it makes more sense. This is a very a simplified form of how logging can be done in an application. So basically, an application would generate logs some of it, a lot of it, I don't know. Uh, they, it, it will generate logs, probably put it into a local file in the file system or put it out in the standard output. Then another log shipper or log agent will actually push it to the log management software that you're using, where the logs might be parsed, analyzed, and then 
the software engineer is able to view them, search them, make sense out of it, probably even build metrics. So this is one way of doing it. Another way is the application directly trying to send the logs over HTTPS or, I don't know, using a library, which is not very efficient, but it's, it's being done. The, this is another way of doing it as well. Choose a very trusted library when you want to jump into logging if you're not doing it as, as we have found out that many people are not really doing it here. So choose a trusted library. For instance, uh, for PHP, Monolog has almost become a standard and Laravel out of the box supports Monolog. So try to use what's already there, what's, op what's open source. If you use something like JavaScript, TypeScript, Node, we have seen a bit of TypeScript in the morning as well. There also there are options, for instance, Winston is pretty popular. As you can see, it has 14,000 plus uh, GitHub stars. And some other languages are providing it natively. For instance, Python or even Go has their own logging library that comes with the language. You don't really need to get another package or library to do your job. On top of that, don't forget about all the monologue handlers and formatters. For instance, there are handlers that send log to some SaaS providers. There are other handlers that uh, can just send logs to, I don't know, like Graylog or something like that. Plus, there are formatters, for instance, that can format your logs into JSON, or you could even use a formatter to get your logs out in, the, in, in Chrome PHP, so your logs comes in the P PHP console. So things like these, know of them, use them, basically exploit them. And the log management software that I was talking about actually in this particular slide, there are some options that you have. For instance, if you are in an organization that cannot host anything outside of your organization, use something self-hosted. For instance, I have used Graylog in the, in the past. It is, it is pretty good. ELK, Elasticsearch, Logstash, and Kibana, that stack is also very good at storing and giving you an, an interface to view and search logs. If you want to get started quickly, just pick a SaaS. I'm going to show an example of log entries later. You can even use Logly, or maybe in today's day, I might, I might suggest uh, Semetex because they have a very generous 500 MB per day free plan. So it depends upon your needs and what you want to do. If you don't want to use a self-hosted or a SaaS-based solution, and you are already using the cloud, you could just yeah, use one of the cloud-based providers log viewers or log, log management software. For instance, Amazon has CloudWatch. Similarly, Azure has Monitor. And uh, Stackdriver was independent earlier. Google bought it. And as far as I've used Stackdriver, Stackdriver has all the uh, other amazing features like Trace. You could do live debugging on, on production, as well as uh, alerts. And these things are pretty nice in, in Stackdriver. So these are basically your options. Probably there are more, but these are some of the ones that I've I have worked with. Another thing is once you have distributed application and once you reach to a, a good amount of scale, uh, you're going to have multiple servers. And if you're using containers, probably you have like 10 containers running for the same application. It is not possible for you to go into each container and do a tail minus F to see your logs. right? That's why if you can ship all of your logs properly to one log, log management software, and then it provides you a good UI, your life becomes a lot easier. So you just go there, you just search for what you are looking for, and then you are able to pinpoint any issues or problems in the application a lot more faster than without having logs, of course. Let's look at some of the logging best practices uh, that can help you while you start logging or that can make your logs even better if you're logging already. First and foremost is log information optimally. This is, a it, this is quite a difficult balance to strike that if you log too much, it becomes noise. It's like it's impossible to search into, really make, navigate through it, and really make sense out of it. But if you log too less information, that becomes very less. It's not adequate enough, again, to give you value, right? So, one suggestion I have here is maybe you can have something like a verbose mode that some commands have. If you have a minus v, 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 minus it's a dash v, 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 it gives you more, more logs. So you could have something like that, a switch, I don't know, a, a feature flag on even on a production that only at certain times you could just turn that flag on and get more logs. And on 
in like normal days, you just don't turn it on and then you just get your regular logs. So this is something you need to be very careful and yeah, like striking the correct balance, it is not easy. Another thing that I see team members uh, not being a bit more careful about are the severity standards of logs. So it is a standard, there are eight levels from emergency to, to debug as you can see, emergency being the, the most severe, whereas debug being just informational or like just for debugging local purposes. What you need to understand is an emergency will ring someone's phone even at 1 or 2 a.m. If you have pager duty or obscenity, I don't know what is what, whatever you are configuring, it will ring that pager or ring that phone at, at 1 or 2 a.m. But things that are just good to know, just put it up as information, and that's just good to know, good, good to know stuff. An example that comes into my mind is like, for instance, for an e-commerce company, if something related to the checkout is not working, that's an emergency. Someone needs to wake up and fix it now, right? But let's say if the order confirmation email is not going through, that's basically a maximum of a, of a, a notice or a warning that you can look at it, say, okay, this is fine, no one's dying, I just wake, I just wake up tomorrow morning, 9 a.m., probably I'll fix it. So that's how you should deal with, uh, with these kinds of severity levels that make sense to your business. Another way is, another good thing that you should follow is always structure your logs. Structure, structured logs are easier to parse and search. And you could use JSON as a structure. You could have your own uh, team level standards, for instance, saying my log lines will not be, or our log lines will not be longer than 255 characters. Whatever is extra, we'll put it into the context. So you could, if, if you have those kinds of rules being set up inside the team itself, it helps you a lot to make more, to get more value out of your logs. And the other thing is always provide context. For instance, don't write log lines that says an order has been created or a user has been created and, and very general things like that, that don't really uh, give the reader a sense of what is actually happening. Rather than that, what you could say is an order with order number, blah, 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 has been created. You could add more context related to the order, maybe, I don't know, the, the number of items or anything that makes sense and that will give more context to the reader who is actually reading the blogs. So be, be careful on how you write and structure your logs. Another important thing, as I pointed out earlier as well, is logs should not hamper the speed and performance of your application. They, logs are for humans, so write it as if you are writing it for humans. Humans are gonna read it, it's not for, for some machines. So, but while writing those logs, try to make it asynchronous or just m make it write it in the local file and then some other, sh other log agent or shipper is actually shipping it to, that, uh, to your particular log management software. In some cases, if you have too many logs, you could even go to a queue kind of a mechanism where your logs are written to a queue and let's say if you, if, if you are using so something like Lambda which is serverless, as soon as you drop that particular message on the queue, then then uh, a consumer would be spun up and then it will do its job, consume the log, process the log, and then die. So depending upon your use case and skill, think of this, because if you start writing logs which do a HTTPS call and then write it to your log management service, it's surely gonna slow your app down because for every log you write, you're, you're trying to establish a HTTP connection and then write things to another server. So be very careful of this as well. Another thing is if, if anyone is doing microservices, think of traceability, and for that, you could think and read about distributed tracing where basically a request ID travels through multiple services. Let's say if you have a shipment service and then another mm, quality check service or something like that, and if, tra if, if your request travels from shipment to quality check to something else, the same request ID travels through so that you can see it in your logs that it was the same request that came in, but it traveled through multiple microservices. So this type of distributed tracing helps you a lot. If you're interested, you might want to read into something called HTO telemetry, which is, which is a good uh, example of service mesh where these kinds of things are kind of given to you. Uh, another thing with, uh, with microservices is be careful because 
logging can help you a lot in, in this sense, but you, you always have to be careful that you write the logs, you log the right stuff. Yeah, towards the end, don't log sensitive information. I have seen this happen multiple times. Um, things like passwords, credit card information, phone numbers, given where you are, which part of the world, don't log them. You might think this is a very rookie mistake. Who <laughs> logs passwords? But just in March 2019, Facebook was doing it. And then, like, their and they were saving passwords in plain text. The employees could search it, and some of the apps were logging it. You know? So this is not a rookie mistake. It, it, it happens even in big companies as big as Facebook, and there was a big fuss about it. So be very careful. You, you might just want to log the whole request object, but wait, that has probably someone's password or someone's credit card information. So if, if you do such, if, if, you, if, you have, if you happen to log such things, be careful and maybe you can have another handler or another formatter that scrapes it out. For instance, yeah, we, we once created a, a monologue, uh, for monologue formatter, as far as I remember, monologue formatter that checked with regex if the, if the given text looked like a credit card number. And if, if it matched, we just like scrape out the first 12 digits and only keep the last four digits just as a back reference. So that helped us a lot to not log any of the sensitive information. <coughs> Some key takeaways. Start logging today. As many of, uh, as I see, as I saw many people not raising their hands, just start logging it. Just start logging. If, if you're doing any application, this logging is language and framework agnostic. So you're using Laravel, PHP, or any other framework or language, start doing it. It's, it's, a, it's a lot easier than you think, and then you tend to realize the value when you have, when you see the logs coming in, into action. So basically, the benefits outweigh the cost a lot. Uh, logs can reveal things you, you didn't know existed at unexpected sources. An example here is we started adding logs to our ERP, which didn't have logs. And then after that, we found out, OK, these queries are very slow. And these are the places where we have deadlocks. And then we started to fix all those performance issues. And in two sprints around a month, we had a lot, a lot less performance issues. So yeah, don't, don't think that that particular application is, is a black hole. No, no one touches it. Maybe if you get more data and insight out of it, you could make it better. You have to know about the difference between logging and error tracking. Logging is more than or greater than error tracking. Error tracking is something that you go when you have issues in your system. Logs are something when you go, when you can't find the issues even in error tracking, because logs have a lot more information, right? So logs are like keeping a tab, a, a track on your application's health. You are actually trying to see what's happening. You could kind of predict things before they happen. So logs are important. Error tracking is important as well. Having a check on your errors is important. But logging kind of encloses that, uh, plus has more things on top of it. Find the right tools and invest, and invest in a, a good log management software. This is important, because something might work for someone, something might not work for someone. Just try to get the right library that works for you, get the right logging software, as I already showed you, at least like some options, given where you want to be and what your organization allows. Get the right tools in place, and then get the most of, out of logs. Another important thing with, with logs is if you have optimally configured alerts with logs, they are very powerful. For instance, we have some alerts that says, if we get 200 errors within five minutes, that's a problem. Call someone, right? So you might have those rules set up where you have very optimally configured logs, and then they give you very insightful alerts, maybe before things happen or as soon as things happen, so that you can recover from them faster. I'm going to jump into a demo quickly. So the whole code is uh, here in, in my GitHub. I'm going to show you the link to the slides later. Uh, the app is hosted on Google Cloud Run. If, if anyone is interested, my last blog post is about 
hosting Laravel in Google Cloud Run. So basically, this is this is one of the dashboards. I had hit this with some request some time back. So yeah, hopefully, yep. So these are some of the logs that that are that I've hit hit it with, and this is basically a Laravel application, a simple Laravel application that runs. So hopefully, if I go here and try to show you the logs, <coughs> it might take a bit because, yeah, okay, fine. This is just what I hit at 1145. So I am logging from a simple Laravel application. It was very, very easy to set it up, to be honest. Like, I'm just passing the log manager here and the stopwatch for some, like if you don't know stopwatch uh, com component of Symfony, it's something you might want to use. So I'm just logging, th this is just a test, so I'm just logging some, some random stuff that's multiple levels of severity. And if you know how logging works in, a, in, in Laravel, basically I just configured log entries. That's, that, that was the, that was the, the interface I showed you. So I, I just configured log entries and Laravel has channels where you could send logs to this one channel or stack it up with multiple channels. As stack is my default channel, it's going to multiple channels. And yeah, after I configured this, I just put some code in the controller just as to test. And that was it. And after I got the right key token from log entries, my logs started to flow. So if you notice, this particular log line is only sent to the log entries channel, so it's only gonna appear here. Because I am writing the logs in multiple channels, one being the standard error, I can even see it in stack driver. So it's the same app and this is stack driver. This, these other logs are from from the container itself, and these are the logs that I've written. So because I'm using channels and a stack of channels, this is being written on all three places. It will be written into a file, I think, called daily.log, but as I am using containers, I don't have direct access to it. So that's one way to, that's one of the ways to log from Laravel. And if you wanna have a look, this is, this is the repository, and this is the pull request. So towards the end, uh, logs are an in integral part of building a happy, robust, and scalable software. As I said, logs are the way that your application communicates back to you. In conclusion, if dog is a man's best friend, logs are software engineer's best friend. Thank you. If, if you have any questions, probably, yeah, catch up later. Another thing, the icon is hiring for engineering, man, engineering managers if anyone is interested. And yes, you can, you can follow me on Twitter. That's my blog and my slides are available in that particular link. So if you want to take a photo, this is the slide you should be taking the photo of. <laughs> Thank you. Perfect, thanks very much, Gershon.